Hi, this is Anusha and you are watching part 2 of the Blender tutorial series Blending Made Easy. Let's get started. This is our default scene and here you can see the default cube. Let's zoom in with our middle mouse button. You'll notice that there is a red and white circle over here with a crisscross. Along with that, there are two perpendicular lines, one of the shade of the y axis and this is red of the shade of the x axis. These perpendicular lines are of 3D transform manipulator which we will be covering later in this tutorial. For now let's focus on this red and white crisscross circle. This is a 3D cursor. The 3D cursor basically is used to mark a location, a position in the 3D scene, in the 3D space. If I left click at this position, the cursor move to this position as well. To send it back to the origin that is 0, 0, 0 on X, Y and Z axis, press Shift C and the cursor is back to its original location. Now what is the use of this 3D cursor? Let's see. I'll try to add a new object. Now there are two ways you can do this. Space, click, uh, press space and then you'll get this popped up add menu. Alternatively, uh, I'm pressing escape right now. Press shift A for the same menu. Now the space hotkey has been deprecated in Blender 2.5. So it's a good habit to use shift A instead of space for adding your new objects. So let's add a mesh cylinder. I'm just going on with the defaults. And you can see that the cylinder basically has overlapped with the cube. This is because the new objects are always inserted at the location of the 3D cursor. If I click over here and press Shift A again to add and then I add a UV sphere this time, the sphere is inserted over here. This is similar to the 2D text cursor. Whenever you insert new text, the text gets inserted at the position of the cursor. So that's all about the 3D cursor for now. It's a very handy thing and we'll be using it more later. But now let's on uh, let's get on with our tutorial. So press 7 to get to the top view again. Now let's delete this cube. Use X that is press X key on your keypad to delete all the selected objects. Since the cube was selected, it got deleted. Let's add something else this time. With the 3D cursor at the origin, I'll press Shift A and add Mesh Monkey. This monkey is affectionately known as Suzanne by the Blender community. So we'll call it Suzanne as well. Now, let's go to the camera view. Press numpad 0. You can see that Suzanne is looking up at the ceiling. Now what if I wanted to look towards the camera? I wanted to face the camera for a quick photograph. Let's use the rotation which we had learned last time. Press R to rotate it. Now you can see that this is free rotation. So press X to rotate it in the X direction and press R, Z to make it face the camera. So now Suzanne is facing us. Alright, now what if I want Suzanne to come forward towards the camera? Now, you can see that these lines over here are pointing in the direction of the three axes. As I said, these are the lines of 3D manipulator. 
press on the red line over here and you can see that we can move the object along the x-axis. Escape to cancel. Try the same with the y and the z-axis. Control z to undo. Now, this 3D manipulator right now is translate manipulator mode. It's in translate manipulator mode. This is the icon for the 3D manipulator. You can click on this or you can pre pre uh, press control space to, uh, to toggle. So basically, we have three transform manipulators. One, we have just seen that. That is translate manipulator mode. Second is the rotate manipulator mode. And third is the scale manipulator mode. Let's try the rotate manipulator mode. These three lines are for rotation along x, y and z axis. We can just click on one of them to make Suzanne rotate on the particular axis. This is the scale manipulator. Scaling along x axis, deforming Suzanne completely, y axis and z axis. Now, we have already seen to manipulate the object using G, R and S keys. So how is the 3D manipulator going to help us? Let's see. Now say for example, as I said earlier, I want Suzanne to come forward in this direction towards the camera. The 3D manipulator will come to help us. We'll click on translate manipulator mode. Right now, the axes are pointing to the global axis themselves. Let's change this by clicking on local. Now, if I press on Z line, then I can make Suzanne move towards the camera. There are other options over here, which we'll be covering later. But these two are pretty interesting, local and global. Since we have made Suzanne rotate, the global axis and the local axis are different. The local axis for the object are right now selected. So I can move Suzanne in the direction on the local axis. Now, let's try putting all these three manipulators on. Use shift and click on all the three to get all these three manipulators visible. It's looking pretty messy. It can be handy sometimes. Here I can use a scale. And this is the translate manipulator. Oh, what a mess. Control Z to undo. So guys, that's all for this tutorial. See you in the next tutorial where we'll be discussing some more interesting concepts. Thanks for watching.